so I bet this could be great. Unless... Oh, come on! Why? Why? Crazy boss! Crazy boss! Crazy boss! As in jizz! Splooge! Man bazooka juice! Is this good acting? A good actor possesses three things. Intention and motivation of the character, emotional range, and memorable performances. They deliver exactly what the writer and director needs from them, regardless of what they think is good or not. In James Rolfe's case, his specialty is anger. So let's look at the greatest actor of all time and see what perfect anger looks like. That's it! That's it! I'm going around the front, you go down the basement! Never mind, I just get it! How do you like it, huh? You jerk! What are you staring at, you bald-headed Jew prick? <laughs> Joe Pesci. Oscar winner, decades of experience, and star of countless classic movies. When people think of a movie star, Joe Pesci immediately comes to mind, and his unique brand of fury and rage has become the standard that all actors are measured to. Nobody does wrath better, and all of his performances have stood the test of time. And just like Rolf, Pesci plays basically the same angry character in every movie, with small tweaks depending on the context. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck me! Fuck me, you motherfucker! Fuck my mother! That's what you do! Help me! Motherfucker! Tell the truth, you're looking for sympathy, is that it, sweetie? Why don't you go fuck yourself, Tommy? It's the world coming to! What the fucking world is coming to? How do you like that? How's that, all right? What's the fucking matter with you? In these scenes from Casino and Goodfellas, we see how Pesci's character always has valid justification for his actions. He flies off the handle in a spectacular way, but we as the viewer never feel like it's out of place because the character doesn't know how to solve problems any other way. They aren't articulate, smart, or well-spoken, so they have to rely on brute force to get what they want. Violence is currency in his world, and since he's a made mafia man, he wants to set an example of what happens when you cross him. His character hates having his time wasted and people cutting into his money. And when both of these things happen, he reaches his boiling point. You never question his motivations. It's always clear and understood. This shows strong understanding of the character's intent and incentive for his actions. Football, don't even get me started. And I'm not talking about the kind of football where they actually use their foot. I mean the kind where they slam into each other like a bunch of barbarians. Ugh! What is it with football? Everywhere you go, football, go there, football. Football, football, football. Look what the fuck? Sunday football, Monday night football, Thursday football, football on Thanksgiving, football on Christmas, and out of all sports, it's the one everybody goes the most fucking ape shit over. Makes them act like fucking maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> Here we see him do two things. First, he establishes the hate the nerd has for football and his past trauma with these games, laying the justification and setting the tone. Second, he shows his true frustration only when physically touching these games, displaying his body's immediate trauma response. It wouldn't make any sense for him to get mad at a game without actually seeing it, because he's shown that he's barely played them to begin with. But when he's confronted with his biggest trigger head on, it activates his fight or flight response. This is a real psychological phenomenon that happens with PTSD victims. What's called complex PTSD. That condition happens due to childhood trauma that's never resolved, and it impacts the brain long term. And James is portrayal of it is perfectly in character. Shitty games all my life. Shitty fucking games. I hate shitty fucking games. And I hate shitty fucking Christmas because shitty fucking Christmas means more shitty fucking games. Sunday football. Monday night football. Thursday football. Football on Thanksgiving. Football on Christmas. And out of all sports, it's the one everybody goes the most fucking ape shit over. Makes them act like fucking maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> The nerd has been through decades of suffering in the past due to these old games, and by him reacting in such a severe way, it shows that he's still a very broken person, with little hope of rehabilitation. Take a look at how he's reacted years before, and see how measured and restrained he was back then. What's the most important aspect about any fucking game? Well, being able to fucking play it, and what do you need to fucking play it? A fucking controller. So what do you do when the controller doesn't work? You're fucked. This is the reason the system failed. This. He essentially distilled decades of pain and character development into just 30 seconds, which is a masterstroke of acting, and shows that James clearly understands motivation and justification. You did what? Since tomorrow morning, I'll get up nice and early, take a walk down over to the bank and walk in and see, and uh, if you don't have my money for me, I'll crack your fucking head wide open in front of everybody in the bank. And just about the time that I'm coming out of jail, Hopefully, you'll be coming out of your coma. You know, you're, you're funny. 
You mean, so? let me understand this, because I don't you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little fucked up, maybe. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. Pesci showcases the full gamut of his anger in these scenes. You can't be at 100% constantly and expect it to be impactful every single time. Doing so creates fatigue for the audience and doesn't give the character any room to grow for when they truly get mad. Here, we see Pesci showcase a more reserved, but still sinister, level of rage, just bubbling underneath the surface and still extremely intimidating. The way he effortlessly ramps up his anger from a dull roar to an explosive cacophony is incredible, and it builds tension and dread in the scene, which is a crucial element of being a good actor, understanding intensification and when to use it. Oh my god. Oh my god. They did it. They pulled through. Oh my god. They made a game. That's not a steaming pile of fucking shit! Oh my god! They did it! They made a game! That's not shit! I found the gold! at the end of the rainbow. James's range is truly boundless. That same level of bubbling, seething undercurrent that Pesci portrayed so well is done as good, if not better, by role. And it's all done through his facial expressions. James has a naturally expressive face. It's one of the reasons he's such a great actor. He can contort it to fit any narrative or emotion and often doesn't even need to speak to perfectly convey emotions. In fact, he's so good at conveying anger with his face that his vocal delivery could be 50% as good and he'd still be fantastic. <laughs> Ah. 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 The grimacing face and differing levels of surprise are his greatest tools, and also his signature moves. 90% of all communication is non-verbal, so if an actor can master body language, they can entertain anybody without needing to speak a word. And if you look at his early facial expressions compared to what he does now, it's clear he's become much more in touch with the over-the-top and chaotic nature of the nerd. You are scum. But the strange thing is, I'm not joking. I am dead fucking serious. What I have heard with my own ears is a Friday the 13th game that has old McDonald at a fucking farm! Wow, that's good coke! If I asked you what your favorite ABGN moment was, you'd have trouble coming up with just one. His repertoire of brilliant lines and scenes is endless. In fact, one word comes to mind whenever you watch him. Iconic. Lord James showcased his dramatic skills. The Action 52 episode showcased his comedic skills. And the amount of quotables he's had throughout his entire career is insane. The Bit Wars line, the LGN redemption, and the Bugs Bunny fight are just a few. The man oozes talent and shows no no signs of slowing down. Had James decided to get more serious about Hollywood acting, he would have won an Oscar by now and at least been nominated several times over. But because he's so damn humble, he decided to hold back and shine the spotlight on his co-stars and his family instead. Here's to James Rolfe, the best to ever do it. 